We continue to preview the 2023 college football season, and this stop is in Mayville, North Dakota, as we get to visit with Rocky Larson, who is the head coach for the Mayville State Comets. Coach, thank you first for being on the program with me today, and let's just get into it. 2022, 3-8, and and three wins near the start of the season kind of dropped off from that point. Take us through last year and into the spring. Yeah, I would say to start the year, played a Roosevelt team at home that's uh, really talented, well coached, and uh, we lost our leader on the defensive side of the football uh, in the first quarter towards ACL, Josiah Walker, who was coming back off 26 TFLs the year before, over 100 tackles. He was Mr. Do Everything for us on that side of the ball, and we had designed a lot of the defense around him. So it took us uh, a long time to try to figure out how to replace that production and how we were going to move around and um, get comfortable with who we were. And um, I come from a running background. My dad was a high school coach in the state of Wisconsin, triple option guy. So I'm used to running the football over the place. And, uh, you know, we, we get going uh, week two, week three. Tim Salmon obviously has a ma- massive couple games. And we turn into a, a team that's going to throw the ball around the yard and get it to our playmakers in space and uh, let them work. So we had to – we changed our identity midway through the year there. And, um, you know, you kind of look at our stretch. We, we won three games in a row, first time since 2016, won three games since 2016. That's a, that's a big feat for um, us, and especially when we started 20 of the 22 starters were sophomores or younger. So mm-hmm. we got a whole whole crew coming back that I'm really excited about. But if you look at, uh, I believe it was four games we lost by one possession, um, that we just have to learn how to win games. You don't learn how to win games unless you're in games, you know, and that's an easy thing to say is, Coach, how, how, how what are you doing differently to – to learn how to close out football games, one possession games. It's just continue to stay to who we are, continue to, to believe in our culture, continue to believe in the guys that got us there. And, um, you know, you look at a Dakota state, we're up seven, 10 points late in the third quarter there. And Tim Salmon gets knocked out with a concussion. Um, and they come back and they score late to make it a 14. We call that a one possession game, but it was, they scored with under a minute left to go up two scores. We get beat 24, nothing in the fourth quarter in that game without our quarterback. Um, Waldorf, a couple weeks before, 28-21, it's 21-21 with four minutes left in the game, and we have the ball driving. You know, that's a really good football program that we had a chance on our home turf to finish. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this. I think the guys have put in a lot of work. We've done a lot of uh, good stuff this offseason. I'm excited to see this group come back and see the maturity and the steps we've taken. Uh, I think it could be a really good fall up here in North Dakota. But you mentioned Tim Salmon, and he was a name that did get recognition not just around your conference, but also around the country. I mean, he put up uh, some some pretty intense numbers, threw for more than 2,500 yards last season, but threw for more than 500 in two individual games, put seven touchdowns on the board against Nebraska Wesleyan, and in the season finale, uh, 563 passing, four touchdowns there. So uh, talk about him and his play, and you talked about the fact that he, he changes the identity for you. Absolutely. And Tim Tim was a sophomore last year, so he comes back. He's got two years left. Uh, the thing about Tim Salmon, people don't realize, is he's an unbelievable kid. He's he's a quiet kid. He's a great leader. People listen to him. Um, I don't think Tim knows how good Tim is. And that's uh, a, a big testament to him and the way he came up. The interesting fact, my brother's a high school coach in the state of Wisconsin, um, and he actually was my brother's high school co- quarterback before he came up here and now uh, he's with me. So I've known Tim for a long time. I watched him go through high school and now uh, into the college ranks. And the thing about he's 6'3", 230 pounds right now. He's a big kid uh, who can swing the football around the yard. And we got good playmakers on the edge. We've added some big tight ends this class. Um, with Kelby Azure, a transfer from the University of North Dakota State, uh, Chance Danner, Derek Frederick. You know, we got three tight ends over 6'5 that he can get the ball to across the middle. So um, Tim's really good at getting the ball to where it needs to go and letting playmakers make plays. Now, he can also throw the 50-yard bomb and let our kids go make it. But Tim Salmon's what makes that offense go. And, um, you know, he's got control with the next two years, and I'm really excited to see. I think he – it's crazy to say he led the country in passing yards per game because he missed two games. Um, but I think he's just scratching the surface, and he's really starting to understand the offense. And um, I'm really excited to watch him play this year. Coach, you, you talked about the, the, the tight ends that you brought in too, but mentioning the fact that uh, you would like to run the ball anyway, what's your running game look like now, knowing that Salmon's there in the backfield as well? Yeah, and Mason Ullman's a big tailback for us, a transfer from Bemidji State. Uh, he carried the football for us a little bit last year. Uh, you know, Mason's 6'2", 225, and then uh, we have a plethora of uh, Blaze Ferry. Uh, we have a few other backs, Cole Gazelle, that we can get the ball to in space and 
uh, be included in that passing game. So I'm really looking forward to that group and uh, just about our entire offense line. We return four of the five up front. So that's a big piece of being able to run the football as continue to get older. And you look at what we did last year, you know, we're starting a lot of 19, 18 year olds up front against 22, 23 year olds. We're all of a sudden becoming 20, 21 year old and we're starting to catch. Um, so we can get a run game going and we don't have to be so dependent on, on throwing the football vertical. And if you've ever been to Mayville, North Dakota, the wind blows, uh, I think every Saturday, 40 miles an hour. So you got to have some sort of round game just a little bit um, to keep people off, uh, to keep them off. We're speaking now with Rocky Larson from Mayville State, who, by the way, congratulations. Your family has grown uh, here in just the past few days, so congratulations on on the new addition there. Uh, let's look at your defense for a second. And you were talking about the fact that they were young players. It was on both sides of the ball, too, and, and led by a couple of sophomores last year. They'll be juniors this year. Anthony Johnson, a linebacker, led the team in tackles, and Denzel Navy in the secondary, both of them going to be juniors this year. Yeah, and Denzel Navy's been a guy who started for us uh, every game since he's been here as a true freshman. Um, he's played corner, he's played linebacker, he's played free safety, he's played strong safety. He's played just about every position but the defensive line for us. So the thing about him is he really understands how we want to play defense. Uh, he understands the the versatility needed of him to be able to go walk down a receiver or be able to go play a high hole. Um, but he's a, he's a high character high motor kid that plays really hard and uh, he's a really good football player coming back. Anthony Johnson came to us as a uh, two sport athlete. He was a good baseball player out of high school. And um, after his freshman year, he decided to go all football. And um, he was a surprise last year for us. He came in and had a great fall camp, really picked up the defense, um, made a bunch of big plays, TFLs. Uh, we're really looking forward to having him back and talking about linebacker Richie Shel Shelton, uh, was our starting middle linebacker last year. And he was a tight end the year before. And, you know, we just talked about those three tight ends we have right now. So we needed to find a place for Richie to play. And he'd never really played much defense. He came over and played middle linebacker for us. And he's only done it one year. So we're really excited to see what that that process looks like going into year two. Uh, but I think his ceiling is extremely high because he doesn't know the position um, as well as the other guys. But he, he's done a great job learning it. Devin Woods on the line talked about young players. He was a freshman last year. He was able to get into opponents' backfields in his first season. Yeah, and Devin only started four games for us. Um, you know, he started at the end of the year. He came on 245 pounds, and he's a big, big dude. We're going to move him around from linebacker to D-line and let him drop into coverage. He's just a really athletic kid. He was a, a big-time player out of high school, and uh, he's he's – makes it hard on a, on an old line because we're going to move him around so much to get him into matchups that we like that he can win. And he's also good enough in coverage that he can drop out and cover a tight end. He can drop out and cover a tailback. He can be a spy on a quarterback. So for him to be a freshman and uh, going into a sophomore campaign, I think his ceiling against high. And with that, you know, we were, people think we're great. You know, we're coming off three and eight season and we're really optimistic. I think, we got just about everyone back, and these kids have stayed at it. We had more kids stay the summer than we've ever had. We have – our workout numbers are through the roof. Our test out, like, it's a really exciting time to be part of Comet football, and we're excited to see where the next steps take us. Coach, one more player I want to mention, and I, I move over to special teams, Braden Lacombe, and the numbers for him are just about as good as you could possibly ask for. Four for five – field goal attempts on the season just missed one 30 for 30 extra points solid player there yeah and great i mean he's fantastic went out and we got him from arizona and um last year's true freshman you worry about bringing a kicker in from arizona to kick up in the tundra but he did an unbelievable job um we haven't had a kicker at mayville state in 10 15 years so it's <laughs> My first three years, if your first two years here, when we'd line up to kick an extra point, that was the scariest moment of the whole Saturday. Is I had no idea where it was going or how it was going to go, but you know, we, we line up to kick a field goal now, and I feel more confident than anything. I mean, he's he's Mr. Steady Eddie, he does everything right, um, comes from a great background. So, I think again, he's a kid who came in at 150 pounds, he's up to 160, he's worked hard, he's worked on his leg strength, um, and I'm excited to see him. I mean, his kickoff numbers, we've starting field position, all that stuff has really changed for him. So he's a massive weapon in the special teams unit. 
Coach, we look ahead to your schedule. It starts in August, and you play on the road. First three weeks of the season, you, you go to Montana State Northern in the season opener, then at home against Dickinson State. North Star play there. You have the double round robin this season, and you start against the perennial champion in the conference at Dickinson State, and then you take on one of two Division three opponents as you go to Nebraska Wesleyan before you finally get home September 16th. I'm sure your fans will be glad to have you finally back home. That's home coming and you take on Waldorf then yeah and I think our schedule changed so many times this offseason with presentation uh shutting down Iowa Wesleyan shutting down we had Flynn Landy on our schedule they shut down so we had right there we had four games on our schedule uh if we would have had this discussion back in December we our schedule looked completely different so we were excited to be able to fill out an 11 game schedule with all the different cancellations and heading out to montana a lot of our kids have never been that far north or into montana so that will be a good uh, a good test against a, a frontier team and that's that's a good league and uh we're gonna have to be ready to play they do a lot of really good stuff on offense and defense and in uh, week two we go to dickinson state and um we'll find out in a hurry you know, what steps we've taken and Dickens, I mean, what coach Stanton has done there and coach Thier and those, I mean, that, that is the cream of the crop. Uh, they do everything right. They're great people. Um, I have the most respect for that program and it's always fun to play them because it's the measuring stick. You know, when you think you start having stuff going on, you go play Dickinson and they bring you back to life or they say, Hey, we're doing things right. And it's a Testament. So, um, our kids will be ready for the challengers, no question. Playing three on the road, is it ideal? No. But at the same time, do we get, still get to play college football and we still have a chance to make the postseason? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're not going to find us complaining about it. I like going on the road um, because it's just the you and the 57 guys and um, you get some team bonded. we got three overnight trips to start the year. And, uh, you know, when you look back 40 years from playing – you might not always remember the score, but you'll remember what happened on the Friday night or the road trip or the stories. And uh, yeah. those are the memories that really make college football special. And um, I'm just excited to take it on with this group and this staff. And uh, we're really looking forward to the year. And um, we, like I said, we really appreciate letting us share our story here. And we feel good about where we're going. We got to add a couple things yet this summer, but um, yeah, it should be a really fun fall. Coach Rocky Larson, the Comets look to be in a good position heading into 2023. And, Coach, thank you again so much for your time, especially now with uh, your family growing. And, again, congratulations for the the new son. And uh, we look forward to following you this season as well. Should be a lot of fun. I have to ask one more question. Yeah. Uh, And I meant to do this. Uh, Does does Tim Salmon still have the, the Minshew mustache? I'm sure he'll be back during fall camp. He does something different every year. He made a bet last year. He went, well, him and the tight end group, over twenty dollars that he wouldn't grow his hair out all year, and he grew it grew it out down to the middle of his back. So you never know what he's going to look like. Just had to check on that. We'll follow yeah. that too, Coach Larson. Thank you for being with us here on Midwest Sports Now. Thanks so much for having us.